So today I'm going to be showing you how you can take models from your unpacked files, put them into Blender and then go into Unreal Engine and get them into dungeons. This is the model that we're going to be making today so keep watching and enjoy. So before we get going, if you haven't seen any of the other videos and you don't really know what you're doing, I suggest to go back and look at them because you're going to need Unreal Engine, you're going to need Blender, you're going to need the mod kit, you're going to need the Blender script. Um, there's a whole host of things that you're going to need to go through before you can get to this step. So first off, we've got to decide what weapon that we're going to mod or item or what it is you want to change the look of, make it look a little bit different. I'm going to go with something relatively easy for this. So I'm in my Dungeons Modding folder, I'm in Export and then I'm in U Model because this is one I like to do at work in more than BMS. Game, Actors, Equipment. Um, I'm going to do a melee weapon because they're probably the easiest and I think I'll just do the axe because the axe is relatively easy. So we're in axe here. <coughs> now, as per the other video, we need to make the file structure up within the um, Unreal Engine. So I'm going to make this up within the content of the Unreal Engine. There's a different way than I've done it before. So I'm going to make up and open up a new folder. I'm going to browse to where we are, Dungeons Modding. Here we go and then it's modding and then dungeons mod kit it's unreal 4 project content and it's in here now we need to make this folder axes equipment melee weapons axe so new folder actors new folder equipment like I said before, um, if anyone knows an easier way to do this, please let me know. Or you could just go on to here and copy that and go back to here and paste it. And then find the one that you want. Axe, I don't really need to copy that because it's so short. New folder, Axe. Alright, so this is where um, everything that we put into Unreal will live when it converts it so we can't put anything else in there but what we can do is we can take this we we'll copy that and then we need to go back to dungeons modding folder modding and then on here i suggested to make a new folder uh, i don't know what we're gonna call the axe so i'm just gonna call it axe modded for now and then I'm going to paste that folder structure that we just made into here so we can go all the way down into the base here. So we are now down to axe. So now what we need to do is go back to this folder here with all the stuff in and what I like to do is I like to copy over all this. So we're not mucking up the export folders if we make a mistake or need to change anything. We're copying them and these are the things that we edit that we put into Blender or whatever and then we export back to um, Unreal Engine. So if you open up Blender now and get it loaded up you'll be met with a screen like this. Uh, my Blender knowledge isn't brilliant so bear with me I might do things a bit different to you or differently in other things but anyway we get to the end result in the end. So if you hit A and then delete yeah, that will select everything and delete everything. We then need to go file and we need to go import and then skeleton mesh.psk select that and then we need to navigate to our folder where we copied everything over from so <clears throat> this is D no it's not it's on my desktop it's a dungeons modding and then it is modding axe modded and down there directories to sm underscore axe dot ps okay now scale down you can it's up to you you can either scale it down now or scale it down on the export i like to scale it down on the export that's just me um <clears throat> but anyway uh, then you can click import psk so we import the psk and it becomes here in the screen you can see it, it's uh the axe no textures are on it we will add them in a minute and we will do everything we can to modify this weapon so now that we've got the model in here um, and all the file structure on the right hand side here is as we need it, we need to change the model, do whatever you want with it. So for this one I'm actually just going to go add, I'm going to go mesh cube, it adds a little cube in here, I'm just going to scale it up slightly 
So there's the cube there. I'm just going to scale it here so it's roughly the same. There you go. You can see it's in there. All nice, all good, not too bad. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take note of the names here. I'm going to go and I'm going to rename this one and I'm going to copy what I haven't changed. And then I'm going to go back to cube here and I'm going to rename it here. So we have one, they look the same but they're not. That's got two on the end and that one's got a no, no two on the end. Now we need to assign the material editor to this one. So what we need to do is select the stick as you were. Go down here to material properties. Click on the little circle thing, ball, whatever you want to call it. And go M max. We click on the drop down here and you can see it's pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is, is this bit and this bit. Now if we rename this and do the same as we did before. So now that both of these are the same or they're copied over, we can then delete the original axe. So the axe is now gone. We're left with our little sticky. So depending on where the um, the mechanism for the game actually holds it, so some will be down, moved around, stuff like this. So bear this in mind with your axe. So sometimes it's better off to build a model and then delete the original, so you actually get the holdings and things like that. But anyway, it doesn't matter in this. I don't really care. <clears throat> so now we've got to apply the texture to it. So click on the model again, the axe and the new axe. You're on M axe over here because you shouldn't have deviated away from the material properties. And then we need to go use nodes. Now over on the left hand side down here, you need to go shader editor. We drag this up and we can see the shader properties. Then we need to add the texture. So we go add input. No, we go add texture and uh, image texture here and um, open. And then we need to browse to our axe. So because we went into recent, it's right here. And then we need that T underscore axe to PNG. Open that, drag the color over to the base color, change linear to closest. And then up the top right here for the render options for the scene, we want to go viewport shading. We can then see that the actual texture has applied to it and it looks horrible. So we need to look at UV editing. So basically UV editing will be applying different facets or sides, polygons, whatever you want to call it, to the actual um, texture that we've selected. So let me just drag that back down because we don't actually need that. Up the top here we've got the little tabs, you want to go UV editing. We've um, <coughs> It jumps, it's all a bit weird. So we've got our stick here and we've got here, because it's all highlighted it shows all the maps here. So we don't really want all of them so we click off of this. Up the top next to edit you've got here which is uh, face select. So we click the top one and then we can click the bottom one. I'll hold down shift not control. So hold down shift click and click you just get both of them on here. So the next thing you need to do is go UV snap to pixels corner. This will make it a lot easier for editing. So on the left hand side you can click anywhere to deselect them but they will still show. And then we can go and highlight this and then we can move this over and it will snap to the pixels. It's really handy. Otherwise it wouldn't snap to the pixels and it'll go anywhere in between them. So we're just going to use the top and bottom as the same. So don't worry that this texture isn't right. We're going to change the texture later on to suit our needs and do what we want to do. So now we have to do the sides so we can do the same again holding holding down shift and selecting them all. Now they're all in a nice little line but they are not not the right size because our stick is a lot longer than it is thinner and these are all square and all the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this out and then we're going to drag this one out as well. Um, bearing in mind that we do have a, another texture or UV map going here for the top and bottom so we really want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to go, they're about too wide would you say, so we're just going to make it two pixels, two pixels, two pixels and two pixels. So then up the top here if you scroll across you'll get your viewpoint editor and you can actually see the renderer here. If I come off of it you can see what we've done and we've done it like that. So it's not to worry, it doesn't really matter at this stage. I'm just going to make sure that this, so if that's two that would be four. So we just need to select these two again and we just need to bring them in so that it's four. So it's all corresponding and all the textures, all the pixels will be the same size sort of. I mean we have got it a little bit stretched out here um, 
it's up to you to try and sort it out and make it the best you can. You could go back to uh, layout and you could scale it back down um, to something like that and then there'd be a bit more square you see so we'll keep with that and that'd be good so anyway back to the UV editing so now what we need to do is we need to update our image here to correspond to the texture map that we're making so I press Control A on the right viewport there and it, it showed all the texture mapping so I'm just gonna go here I'm gonna go to where our copy of our axes and I'm gonna open this I'm gonna edit it in paint now as paints probably not the best thing to use uh, you want something that can handle transparency really because um, some of the textures actually do use transparency and paint doesn't really uh, it's a bit finicky you I believe there is a way of doing it but it's more hassle than it's worth and the annoying thing about paint is is when you bring it down like this it doesn't like to show things so I've got the brush selected at the moment, let me just make it bigger and get the pencil because I prefer the pencil. So we're just going to get rid of everything that's on here because we don't need it, we um, aren't going to use it. So it's all black which is all fine. So we've got the four texture, four squares here that we need to do, so we do uh, like that, so I can't zoom it in anymore, um, and we do like this. There we go, so that would be like that. So then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up and then all the way across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we were all the way across. So that's this is where our texture is going to be on the actual um, axe handle or stick, whatever you want to call it. And then we've done this color, so we're going to do that and then I'm just going to go through and I'm literally just going to make like a horizontal pattern here like that. So then we press Control S. Back on here, if we go over to Image, Open, TX Image, you see there the stripes are here. That's there, and it's all nice. It's sort of a uh, candy cane sort of style. It's not brilliant, but it works. I mean, we could even go one more and make <coughs> this side the same colours and this side the same colours rather than having the stripes so that would mean them two swapping around so I clicked on that there and then swap them two around so that is the top and bottom two so I've got red selected uh, we go like that and then we just go here and we do that and see if that's the right way around I can't remember and then we go image open T underscore X open and no that wasn't the right one but we made two sides like that so you can see what I've been doing here so I'm just going to go and edit that back, save that image and open. Right, so anyway, we're back to where we were. They they should have been swapped around and I made them all solid. But anyway, I'm just going to keep it like this just for simplicity. So now we're just going back to a layer, layout mode. It's all here. Um, you can see it like this. It looks horrible. But yeah, that is generally how to uh, do a simple UV map on any object, selecting the polygons and then going through and remapping and changing the texture. It's quite simple really on, on basic models like that. So now that we're happy, we need to export it. So we're going to go File, Export, and then we need to go FBX. But before we do that, I suggest you press A, select everything in the scene. It should just be this here. Go File, Export, FBX. Navigate to the Axe folder because this is where it's going to be. So it's down in Recent again, the last one we looked at. And now I have actually made a preset, so it's easier for me. But I noticed that my uh, scale was off, so it should be 0.01. But anyway, if you follow this, so I'll scroll down. Um, this is what you need to have done to export it properly. Um, so you need scale 0.01 if you haven't scaled down previously. Otherwise, you'd leave it at 1 if you did scale down. Um, all localize, Z forward, Y up. Apply unit use space transforms don't apply transforms under geometry face export sub not export subdividing um, apply modifiers not these one not this one and then under amateur uh, all these use deformed bones and i believe that's already checked so take off add leaf bones under bake animation these ones here and that should be good to go so i'll just go down it again so you can see it briefly and then we just need to rename it to how the other file is because that's the best thing is just to keep the names the same otherwise we get a little bit confused and um, Unreal might get a little bit confused so it won't work so SM underscore AXE export so then if we load up our axe we will see here that the SM underscore axe is there we can also open that in the Windows 3D viewer 
and it should look just like I did in Blender but the textures aren't closest they are using the linear so it looks a bit weird it's not going to look like that in game but that's just a quick preview so now we need to go and load up Unreal Engine so Dungeons Modding Modding uh, Dungeons Mod Kit Master Unreal 4 Project and then the Dungeons U Project down here so once that loads up, sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it's quite quick, just let it roll, um, it will come up and then I'll show you what to do in a minute. Right, so Unreal Engine is just loaded up and you can see here the folders that we made earlier, Actor is here. So we need to go through there all the way to the end to Axe. We then need to populate this with our files that we made or just made. So the file that we just made was sm underscore axe, that was the one that we exported from Blender, you can find it in your Axe file, file system, folder, whatever you want to call it drag that in down here and then we should get a little pop-up so we'll have to go through this and make sure everything's okay to import can't quite remember what's right what's not right um, it's all quite easy it should be so it's got skeletal mesh here we don't have a skeletal mesh so we don't have to import it if it does it should be ticked already and, and it should bring it in for you but we're not using that so we're not really that worried so just go through yours and make sure yours looks roughly the same as this one and we should be good to go i won't go through them because i can't remember which ones are ticked and which ones are not ticked so just pause the video and have a look just make sure yours are exactly the same and we shouldn't have any issues Right, so I think we're good to go. Then what we'd need to do is we need to click, I'm gonna click import all. It then goes off and it says import and sm underscore ax. You can see here that it's got the uh, material, it's got the model and it's got the texture. So <clears throat> what we need to do now is save it. Save selected. And uh, Unreal takes a long time sometimes to render up but the previews for the actual images down here. There you go, it's done it. I find that if you save it, it does it quicker. If you don't save it, it can take an eternity. So just bear that in mind. So now what we need to do is double click on this texture here, the T underscore X. We need to make this under texture, we need to make it nearest. This will bring it back to a blockiness that we're used to and everything would be all right rather than having I can't remember, default here and it's all blurred out and linear. Right, so there we go, save that, and that's saved. And you can also see by dragging this up into here, it's very small that, hopefully we've got the right export amount. Um, it hasn't updated yet. Like I said, it takes it uh, can take an eternity to update, it's absolutely absolute pain in the bum, but anyway, we don't need to do that, you don't need to do that. So this is all here, click save all again just to make sure, if it comes up saying uh, temp, just, just press cancel, whatever. These are already saved, they're all done, they're all good. So once we've done that we can minimise um, Unreal Engine, go into the back into Dungeons Modding, and then we can go modding dungeons mod kit master and then we can cook the assets and package up the assets the assets that we made are in here they're in content actors equipment melee weapons axe they're in here so these are the ones that we've all done so we're going to go back here and we're going to go oops, sorry back here and we cook the assets now sometimes this can take a while sometimes it can be rather quick don't have Minecraft Dungeons open when you're doing this because it probably won't work. Um, in fact, I don't think it does work. I think I've done it numerous times to understand that it doesn't work when doing this and it's just never going to work. I think it's something to do with overwriting the files or something. So just don't, don't even look at it. So once we've done that, we can minimise um, Unreal Engine. Go into the back into Dungeons Modding and then we can go modding Dungeons Mod Kit Master and then we can cook the assets and package up the assets the assets that we made are in here they're in content, actors, equipment, melee weapons, axe they're in here, so these are the ones that we've all done so we're going to go back here and we're going to go oops, sorry, back here and we can cook the assets now sometimes this can take a while sometimes it can be rather quick don't have Minecraft Dungeons open when you're doing this because it probably won't work. Um, in fact, I don't think it does work. I think I've done it numerous times to understand that it doesn't work when doing this and it's just never going to work. I think it's something to do with overwriting the files or something. So just don't, don't even look at it. So once that closes, you know it's done. We can then move to packages.bat and do that. This one is super quick. Blink it and you'll miss. So all we need to do now is... Um, 
run the game. So Minecraft Dungeons are loaded up and we hopefully should see the axe or stick, whatever you want to call it, in the game. Dungeons is just loaded up here, just put it into viewport. And you can see that our axe, our little stick is in the game, it's in here. You can see that he's moving it, it's attached to his hand and it all looks good. If I zoom in a little bit you can see a little bit more here. So we start the game. Sometimes the camp takes ages, sometimes it doesn't, it's random. Um, sometimes you might find you'll make something and it will crash the game um, when it's loading to camp or loading into the lobby scene or wherever the, the item is being used. There you go, you can see here our little stick it has been made and it all looks good. Um, <clears throat> if we hit with it like that it still works because we've done the axe, it's, it's working as intended. So that is how you can import a model from Blender into Unreal Engine and then into Dungeons and get it to work. Though this is only client side, it's quite nice to see that you've actually done something and other people can do it as well. So you go, you can see it here, our little stick that we've done. Looks good. It does its job and I'm quite happy with that. I'll call it a candy stick. I don't know. Um, I need a name for it. So if anyone wants to name it, I've got to do a video where we change this here. Um, so let's put a poll out, see if some people can come up with some names for the uh, stick here. I like the candy stick name, but I don't know. So here we go, here is what I propose as the candy stick. Um, that is pretty much the end of the video. Hopefully you've learned how you can import things into dungeons and get them working. There is more advanced tutorials that I could do with animations and things, but this is just to get you started and get you to want to do more. So hopefully you'll want to do more, you've got some questions to ask and you'll give me a like and you'll subscribe. So thanks for watching, until next time, have fun.